If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of the Mind Pump. The Sode. So for the first 43 minutes, uh, we don't talk a whole lot about fitness, but we do do our fun introductory and conversation. And we do do. I said do do, didn't yeah. I? Uh, we start out by talking about uh, mixing coffee. So you get that caffeine. Feels good. But if you take it with Ned, Adam was saying you feel amazing. <laughs> now, Ned makes high quality hemp oil uh, products. And in the hemp oil is a full spectrum of cannabinoids from the hemp plant, including CBD. And sometimes combining that with caffeine apparently feels amazing, but there are other benefits to it. It has some enzeolytic properties as well. If you go to Hello Ned, H E L L O N E D dot com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off uh, your first purchase. Then we talked about the benefits and pitfalls of CBD oils and the importance of dosage. Uh, because you know there's a lot of people ripping people off nowadays on there. Oh yeah. Uh, we brought up the Spider-Man uh, movie cartoon. What's it called? What's the title of it? Something. It's just Spider-Man. <sighs> Is it just Spider-Man? It? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just Spider-Man. Anyway, it was awesome. Uh, and like then we an talked about universe. the movie Green Book and the documentary that gave me anxiety for two days in a row. <laughs> Free Solo. That shit was crazy. I hope we can get that guy on the show. That would be awesome. Gives me tingly. Then Justin talked about his vitamin D test from Everly Well. The according to the test. He needs more D. Go ahead and say it, Sal. <laughs> he needs more, need of the D. more of the D. <laughs> Still low. The one that just never, you know, quits. Anyway, so Everly Well does make tests that you can take at home. So you can test uh, your hormones, testosterone, or your female hormones, estrogen, progesterone. You can test cortisol, uh, thyroid. You can also test food intolerances or food sensitivities. Um, anyway, it's got a ton of tests that you can do at home. You don't need a doctor's prescription. They're very inexpensive. Just go to Everly Well. Dot com. Use the code MINDPUMP for 15% off. We got the hookup for you. Um, and then the last part of that intro was where we talked about a new diet, the AI diet. Apparently computers now are going to tell you what you can and can't eat. Here, eat this metal. Then we get into the, the fitness portion of this episode. The first question was, what are the best ways to break through training plateaus? So you, most of you probably experienced a, a plateau where you're working out and your body stops progressing. We talk about the best ways to get passed through those plateaus. Next question. Uh, what is our opinion on the frequent consumption of zero calorie energy drinks like Rockstar, like Red Bull, those kinds of things? Like, are they good for you? Are they bad for you? Uh, should you switch to coffee? Mm. Find out in that part of the news slash. It's not water. That's it. Uh, the next question was, uh, what is the best way to approach nutrition with your family members uh, who are in poor health? Like, how can you get them to move over to the, the good side because they're on the dark side. What can we do? Slap their belly. And the final question, uh, do skin issues like acne typically indicate food sensitivities or do things like stress and lack of sleep also contribute to acne? Uh, find out in that part of this episode. Also, this is very exciting for me to talk about. MAPS Aesthetic. Now, this is one of uh, this is people's favorite program, one of the favorite MAPS programs that we have. It is the we uh, love like, looking good. So. It is the bodybuilder, physique competitor, bikini competitor type program. It is the program for people focused on aesthetics. Like if you want to shape and sculpt your body, if there are areas of your body you want to focus more on than other areas, if you want to treat your body like a sculptor would and shape it in a way to maximize its visual aesthetics, well, Maps Aesthetic is the program for you. It's fifty percent off the price of Maps Aesthetic is half off right now. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code BLACK50, B-L-A-C-K-5-0, for the discount. Also, we have other MAPS programs and bundles on that site that you can check out. Find the one that fits your body and your goals best. Again, the site is mapsfitnessproducts.com. T-shirt time! And it's t-shirt time. Oh hell. You guys know I love this. <laughs> Suey. <laughs> All right. We had a few reviews this week. Uh, for iTunes, we have two winners. The Sarah's and Bananas Mommy 2. Both of you are winners. For Facebook, we have four winners. We got Phoebe Cray K, Joel Campbell, Lisa Grant. And Beck Asmar, all of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and your Instagram handle, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. 
Dude, Adam, I see you drinking coffee, uh, you know, all the time now and adding some Ned in there. Does that help it taste better? I know Courtney for, I've been trying to get her consistently to take it because it's been doing wonders for her and her thyroid and everything, but she can't stand the flavor. It's like, it, it tastes too much. I hate to say it, it tastes a little bit like weed. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it's it's derived from that, right? So of yeah. course you're going to get that, that flavor a little bit um, and you're supposed to let it sit under your tongue. Um, so for me, if, if I'm, if I'm having it in the morning, uh, which I actually did today, uh, I will have it and then I'll drink my coffee and it actually goes really well with coffee. Well, cannabinoid, I told you guys this a long time ago. Where was it that I gave you guys? It's when we were out in, uh, I already know Discovery Bay. Was it Discovery Bay? Yeah. That was the first time that we did that. <laughs> There's now. an interesting, uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. When you combine cannabinoids with caffeine and the way that the liver, um, process caffeine, hmm. it creates this, um, interesting kind of duality. Like you got the, the, the wired feeling from the caffeine where you kind of feel up mm -hmm. and then the cannabinoids have that enzyolytic kind of calming effect so you get this smooth focus which this is a good actually a good topic i think a lot of people think being hyper wired and hyper up is what is good for performance but that's actually almost as bad for performance as being like fatigued and tired, and I know you guys have experienced this. You ever been? You ever get too psyched up with too many stimulants? Yeah, you get exhausted. Then you oh, go yeah. work out and you get tired. Yeah, mm -hmm. out of breath, or when you're too psyched up and you're trying to read something and it's like you're scatterbrained. You're 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 all over the place. Versus the alert, calm focus that gives you that 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 good performance. Right, you notice the total difference if you've yeah. gone too high uh, versus yeah, because then it can last a lot longer too. Yeah. I feel like if you, you hit that sweet now you, spot. You mentioned with with Courtney your thyroid. Are you talking about because the it helps her with the anxiety? Yes, Is that what yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. That, that's one of the main things that I've noticed. That's the the feedback I'm getting from a lot of people. Is mm -hmm. the the hemp oil is helping them with just feelings of anxiety. Right. And, and so that's stress. the thing too. And I was wondering, cause I mean, she still drinks coffee. We've been trying to lower that too together. Cause I mean, she's not quite on the level, not even close on the level that where I'm at. And, and that's something I've been working on, but, uh, her intake has been a lot less. Um, but you know, usually at night she'll take Ned, but then in the morning she's been starting to take Ned. So I didn't know if like, maybe I'll try that. Maybe we'll do first thing in the morning and, and try and introduce it that way. Yeah. yeah. I, I literally, I'm, I drop, I drop two drops underneath my tongue while I'm like, my coffee's being brewed. So I mix my coffee, pour my coffee, it's setting under my tongue. And then the, that first sip when it goes down, it just mixes well with coffee. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. You're what, doing the strong one. The 15. I am this time. One. Yeah. That's why I'm only doing two. Big difference. Yeah. You yeah. can feel it. Yeah, yeah, no, it only takes the other one. I was having to do like four drops, uh, mm -hmm. at least dropper fulls or whatever. Yeah, full dropper. Full. And I like too now that Ned actually has the they're, they're, it's measured now, right? You guys noticed that the droppers yep. actually I have, did notice that, yeah, yeah, the original ones didn't. And you were just kind of like guesstimating where now I can be a little more precise. It's an it. interesting, this is going to be an interesting time because, um, I was just looking at uh, some of my investment in my portfolio. One of them is uh, GW Pharmaceutical that makes. Um, CBD m medication, so Epidiolex for kids with epilepsy or people with epilepsy. Um, they're also using it for for certain types of pain. I think they're starting to market it towards or testing it for anti anxiety and that kind of stuff. But that's a medication. Mm -hmm. And now you have uh, how hemp is being is legalized, and hemp contains CBD along with other cannabinoids. And now you have companies producing that. How is that going to work? Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because you have the medicinal version, which yeah. is prescription only and expensive, and then you have – and I think that's why the FDA has, has is, is having an issue with companies saying CBD rather oh, than right. saying hemp oil. So I remember separate them them. saying that, yeah, not to use like CBD <clears throat> in the title. Now, is there any fear for you, uh, being that you, you have stock in GW, of that actually kind of hurting it a little bit because that was probably a, a big reason why they've been driven up lately is – no, no. Because they were one of the first to really start to move in that direction, yeah. right? Yeah. No, there's so much hype around uh, cannabinoids and cannabinoid research and just cannabis in general. That alone, I think, it's very speculative, so I'm, I'm not saying, you know, go do this. But I think because the hype alone gets it to uh, uh, um, increase its value because everybody's excited about it. The other thing, too, is I know what the research, uh, what research they're currently doing and what's, I'm predicting what's going to come out. What's exciting to me and what I'm betting on is the cancer research with cannabinoids because I've seen preliminary results. I've seen research on animals. Um, I've seen uh, in vitro research. I've also seen read tons and tons and tons of anecdote. And even the American Can uh, Cancer Association says that cannabinoids have a fav favorable 
effect on cancer. Mm. I think, uh, and I don't know if GW Pharmaceutical is going to do this. I don't know what company is going to do this, but I think at some point they're going to show cannabinoids being uh, high dose cannabinoids being a very effective adjuvant therapy to, uh, to with chemo. So, mm-hmm. like instead of taking X amount of chemo for your cancer, you could take much less. Throw in lots of cannabinoids, and it's more effective. So it helps to mitigate some of the side effects and the side effects yeah. also. And and whether or not that's going to make be a blockbuster in terms of treating cancer, just imagine the headline. You mm-hmm. know, cannabis does help cure cancer, or something crazy like that. That'll oh, just yeah. blow the 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 lid off. Have of you have you and Matthews uh, discussed this very much? Because I know where his stance is on mm-hmm. on. His, he, Matthews is very, you know, his stance is just based off of exactly what the, the specific human research shows. And he's right. The human research is, you know, limited, like like mm. treating, ep, you know, uh, epilepsy right now is the main application in medical research uh, for uh, for CBD in particular. But um, I'm looking at all the other stuff on top of it. So I like to look at, I mean, at the end of the day, anecdote is not evidence. But when you have lots of people, and when I say lots of people, I mean, I mean, you, tons. There's forums dedicated to the some of the other effects of CBD. I've also effect, uh, noticed the effects on myself with just CBD, and this is even before I used hemp oil on my gut health. Um, and then, of course, you know, with a company like Ned, now we have people writing into us saying, "Oh, it, it helps me here, it helps me there." I, I'm, I'm very positive. I'm very, very positive. But yeah, Mike, Mike is very much like if it doesn't say specifically in the research with human studies or whatever, mm-hmm. then I'm not going well, to support it. He, not the, gonna support it that's yet. the area where he's kind of like Lane, right? Where they're both kind of like that. Similar, similar. Yeah. He's just not, um, you know, you know, Lane can be a dick sometimes <laughs> <laughs> to people. <laughs> Mike doesn't try to be that way to people. You no, know, no. So. Yeah, that and sums, I, sums it up. And I actually really, I mean, Mike wrote a really good uh, uh, article on it, and I thought it was really good, you know, because I, I do believe that, um, you know, even us, like it, it, I kind of feel it sucks because – you know, we were working on Ned shit almost a year before it even happened. We talked, we came out on the ep- episodes, first 10 episodes. I think we discussed this and uh, we also called that it would turn into uh, what we're seeing happen right now, which is it's now becoming the cure all for yeah, everything. The, the which, magical pill. Which it, it, it sucks because it, it, I feel like it devalues the, the partnership that we created and we worked so hard to get by finding somebody like Ned. It's because by no means does anybody in here think that. You should be taking it every day for all these re- these other weird reasons and think it's going to give you build a bunch of muscle from it and it's going to give you this amazing sleep. It's like there's there's applications for it and I think that there's it's like any any supplement. But you know there's there's two things that I think that will hurt the hemp oil market. One number one, this is the big one, is you have a lot of companies who say, you know, hey, this is our hemp, our hemp oil. It's got lots of cannabinoids. It has great you know CBD. It's going to work great for you has none of those things in it. Uh, th- there's there's no testing. There's no regulatory agency. There's no... Uh, and, and independent labs have gone out and tested these hemp oil companies and found little to no cannabinoids. So that'll kill it because what'll end up happening is someone's gonna, people are going to try all these other hemp oil products and be like, it did nothing for me and they're going to write it all off forever. Well, and if there was ever a supplement where it makes sense to, uh, you know, pixie dust... It's this one because marijuana is not cheap to get your hands on, or and and ext- or to extract it from. You hemp. mean hemp? Yeah. It's oh, not, it's, it's not at all. Yeah, no, it's not a. You it, want efficacious doses of cannabinoids? You have to do a very good job, and right. it's going to be expensive. It's right. not cheap. So when you buy a protein powder that says, you know, now with CBD or pre workout with CBD, you know, no, if it has any CBD, it has not enough to do anything, and it probably has none. And that's the big thing. The other thing that I think is going to kill people is focusing just on CBD, as that CBD is the is the the cannabinoid that does everything, and all the others don't matter. What the evidence is showing so far is that there's an entourage effect with cannabinoids, where it's not even additive. So in other words, it's not like you get the benefits of CBD and let's say CBC, for example, which is another cannabinoid. It's not that you add the benefits when you combine them; they seem to multiply. They seem to work better when they're all present and real good hemp oil extract has a full spectrum of cannabinoids like like the one that we're working with Ned they they test them at the independent labs and they have they show you all the cannabinoids that are present it's a full spectrum of hemp oil and it's funny because that's just the way 
things that work well in nature tend to work well that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like extracting vitamin C from a plant and taking it probably won't be as good for you or as beneficial as getting the whole plant and eating it with the vitamin C and other bioflavonoids and things in it that seem to you know work better in the body. Right, right. So that's you know my two cents on that. Yeah, switching gears a bit. I this weekend we a little rainy weekend, so Katrina and I were in. We watched. I watched two movies that I, I had been told to watch that I, I hadn't seen yet. One was the cartoon Spider Man, the most recent one. So good. Oh, dude, how'd you like it? it incredibly. Wasn't it great? In, so good. Incredible the way they did it like a comic. I wish I was on shrooms. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> that, that, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, man, that would have been a blast. Uh, yeah, I tell you what. You would have fucking uh, <laughs> pig Spider Man would have. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah. it, 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 took, a, it took a minute to, to kind of get into it because it was so unique and so different. So I had a, such a It was done like a comic book. Yep. The whole thing. I, I felt like I was reading a comic book watching it. That's a spin off on spider-man is that whole oh. alternate universe thing right you know it was really 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 well done especially for a cartoon uh and that, uh, that's why i waited i don't have kids and so it's not like i was gonna go to the movies to go watch a cartoon but i know ever you guys had said it other people had said it uh and it was it was phenomenal so if you haven't seen that i think it's worth watching even if you don't have kids the second one that i watch holy shit i'm mad i didn't go watch this and the reason why i didn't watch this movie was because i the previews suck on it and so if you've mm-hmm. been if you've clicked through on Apple, or if you almost went and saw this like I did, because I saw the reviews, and the reviews were stellar on Green Book, but the hype video, the previews, to get it just this didn't... What's it, Green Book? Green Book. What's it about? Movie of the Year. God, I'm not going to say it. Green I don't, Book? I don't, I don't, yes. It was, Damn, I've never heard of it. It just came out on Apple. It was in the theater, and it, it, it was always like, I think it was like 87 or 90 on, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and Katrina and I kept talking about going to watch it, and every time I watched the previews, they just didn't tell the story enough they didn't sell it well to, yeah they didn't sell it well at all and so well, what's just, it about so it's it's a true story and it is a uh, uh it's based in 1950 something it's a a black pianist and he hires a white driver oh i saw the commercial i remember seeing that you're oh, right they didn't sell it very bro well. epic movie okay it's hmm. a must watch it's really really well written it's the acting is incredible the story it's a true story great great movie i can't believe that i had not gone and seen it but i know why because every time i look and it got amazing reviews so it's it's obvious why it was so good but you know the previews are just kind of like eh, i'll get around to it i'll watch it and we just didn't have something else to watch and we watched it and katrina and i both looked at each other like oh my god that was such a good movie mm-hmm. well speaking of uh movies i watched uh free solo oh you finally watched it which uh uh, you know how you don't crazy. like crazy. Are you are you terrified of heights? Okay, well, or are you okay? With so heights? you know how I'm always trying to get Adam to watch scary movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's always like, no, it makes me too anxious. And right. uh, okay, that's how I felt watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get like scary movies excite me. This talking about it, no joke, right now talking about it because I just watched the end of it early this morning. I see the goosebumps on your bro. Arm. It, my hands and my feet were sweating like crazy. <laughs> you know that feeling you get in your feet where you're like they start to tingle, it's all tingly, yeah. bro. Bro, how uh, crazy is that? I don't that? even want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> this First of all, the guy, so you watched it, right? Yeah, we're trying to track him down. Okay. We're trying to get him okay. on the so show. I'm just going to guess he didn't die. Um, so I'm not going to ruin it for okay. you. Okay, all right. But the dude is legit. Um, he's not, he's just very intelligent, but he's, he's, when they do the brain scan of him, they find out why this fucking guy is so driven to doesn't, do this crazy doesn't shit. Doesn't he uh, come off hmm. a little, someone else- Autistic. Said, well, oh, I was I was gonna say being Ben Greenfield esque. Uh. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god! Just on the spectrum, you know, a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but he, brilliant. You can see his mind working. He's a he, really intelligent guy. Bro, while as he's doing this, right? So he's he free solo and he's the craziest rock climber of all time and does this all without. You know, he's known for doing shit without any safeties. So like, if you he's die, yeah, he'll yeah. die if he falls. In yeah. fact. That's one of the most dangerous things in the world that people do. So some of the best free solo climbers ever are not with us anymore because they died. That's how crazy this this sport is or whatever. Yeah, that's insane. And so, as we're watching it, Jessica's like, she's like, what, what would drive somebody to do this? This doesn't make any sense. And we're trying to figure this out. And when you see this guy talk, he's kind of weird. He's kind of off, super smart. So you're kind of like, well, he is kind of weird, but why would he do this? They did a brain scan, an MRI of him. And they're flashing images in front of his parasite? face. No, no, they're, they're flashing images in front of his face. And the what the what they're doing with this test is to try and see how parts of his brain react to certain images. And the part of the brain that uh, the 
um, what's it called? The um, amygdala, uh, amygdala. Uh, uh, oh, amygdala. The amygdala in his brain. It takes way more stimulus to get that part of his brain to light up. Hmm. Normal stimulus that would get that to light up in my brain or your brain, his is off. Hmm. So this guy literally is numb all the time. So he's just seeking that. He he feels nothing. All mm-hmm. so like if you hug if when you hug your wife or your kids and you get that warm feeling, yeah. he's probably like blah nothing. Not wakes up in the morning nothing. You know oh almost got in a car accident whatever nothing feels nothing all the time. Yeah. Huh. And so when he climbs, this is his way of feeling alive, and that's why he's not terrified. It's because in order for him to even feel okay, he has to. To literally put his life at risk. Which I Crazy. love that they did this part in the movie because it really does explain a lot of these people. Because you got to think that's probably one of the things that the, all of them have in common. Yep. They probably have, and you know, there's obviously probably a spectrum and he's on the extreme side of it. But the people that seek these types of things, that's got to be it. Is that the way their brain is relaying it to them is just they mm. need that to get that same excitement. The same excitement that you or I get when we go over a little roller coaster hill. You know, yeah. that, that's like, exactly. that's enough for me. Like, oh, that was really fun. But even more than that, it's that he probably feels nothing normally. Right. So imagine if the only. Which explains his personality in this. It show. does. Yeah. It wow. totally does. Because imagine if you felt nothing all the time uh, and yeah. the only time you felt something You're was. Like Eeyore. Yeah, you'd have to, you would seek it out, right? To mm. just. Cray, it's insane. And, the, and when you look at the video, because I've been to Yosemite a few times, by the far the most beautiful place I've ever been to ever in the world. But that wall of what is it, El Capitan? Yeah, yeah. It's insane. It's yeah. a massive. What is how big? How big was it? It's like, just like vertical, right? It's pretty much just it's just three, the whole face of it straight up. I want to say how many like, thousand? I want to say three thousand something. No, I, I think that's it's not right. Is no, that? no, no. I think it's way more than that. But the way he had to climb it was just and there were two or three parts on the wall where he people fall and he's like he couldn't figure it out and he's trying to come up with strategies but he's so neurotic about it he he was literally reciting at 7500 feet wow wow he's he's re, he, in his mind he's telling he knows every single part of it and like oh put right thumb here left toe here uh-huh. push off here and it's all like detailed and just insane. Wow. Guess how long it took him to climb that whole damn thing? Three hours, right? <laughs> three Two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. You know it's 3,000. Is There's, I think, 3,000 of like sheer flat wall. There's, on, a, there's a crack. There's yeah. At one point, he's just climbing a crack yeah. the that's whole way crazy, up. because I remember people climbing it, but then they would bring like a tent that they would like- Spend hand, the night up there? Spend the night, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they would so like wa- go to the next So watch in, the, in this order. I know Sal will watch Free Solo, and they're both great, so it doesn't matter, but watch Don Wall first and then Free Solo, because the guy who he brings along- that's the guy who's in Don Wall. So the guy he starts his training buddy, who motivates him the whole time. Don Wall is about the first climb that he did up. He's the one who first made this guy even think that this was possible. But he did it with uh, with gear though. Yeah, yeah, because this was the first but it's, free it's, free but climb. Wait till you watch. All right. I actually think the Don Wall guy is more. The story is cooler. Well, if you're hmm. the first guy to even map out how to climb, not it, only that, I don't, and I won't, I won't ruin it. Oh, okay. There's something yeah. that there's something that happens to him. Then you're like, get the fuck well, out of here. It's crazy. As I'm watching this, I'm thinking to myself, like, because these kind of people do exist in the world in different degrees, right? Yeah. People who need to seek out. Well, I was just gonna say too, like, uh, I mean, it's a totally like different, like dark path, but like sociopaths, like they don't feel like like empathy or. or uh, you know, like they, they don't connect to people like the same as, mm-hmm. as the rest of us. So they, they try and like seek that out certain directions. And uh, obviously it doesn't uh, always go <laughs> that's in a great, great way. That's but. a good point. I wonder what the connection would be between the two or what's different between them. Because yeah. obviously he's not a crazy killer. No. He's a good person. Was, I'm sure it's access yeah. like a like a little less from a different part of the brain. Yeah, well, doesn't feel. I, you know, as I'm, as I'm, and by the way, this, the, the types of people that do this, that, do this extreme, crazy, ridiculous shit that requires a few different things. It requires, number one, a relationship with fear that is not normal, totally different from any other healthy relationship with fear. They have a a type of focus that is um, neurotic. It's totally unbalanced. Mm -hmm. Like this guy for eight years dreamed about climbing this and lived in his car and traveled the world climbing boulders. and That's all he did. Like writes notes on it. Visualizes, talks about it, practices, does nothing else. So that was like all. the first time he like felt something, probably when he was like climbing and then had like a dangerous He's, encounter. He gets to the top of this. Okay, now if I climbed the El Capitan uh, yeah. at the top of it, I would probably ejaculate. I don't know. I'd be so excited. <laughs> I 
I would not stop. Yeah! yeah. I'm the man. Yeah. You know? I would definitely That's celebrate. I'm not, sure. I'm not yeah. sure if I would do yeah. that. Yeah. Trust but, uh, me, you would. There's <laughs> people just down the bar. Hey, uh, yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> is, is Why? That a, oh, Sal climbed into the rock. <laughs> is that an I eagle? guess he finished. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, he gets up to the top, and he just smiles like this, and he's like, He's like, I'm very delighted. This yeah. is the exact words. Yeah. I'm very delighted. I'm very delighted. Like, motherfucker, right you just climbed right. you just the biggest it, you rock just in the world. You just have a cup of tea. An all-time record and a thing that will be talked about probably for the next 50 to 100 oh, years. Oh, but so what I'm yeah. what I was going to say is that the types of people that do this are disproportionately men, um, probably because we're expendable, so our brain, you know, evolution allows us to do crazy shit, but mm. there's a purpose for it. As crazy as it is, you, you know the reason why it exists and the why people do the freaking what are they what are they uh, those those uh, suits flying squirrel yeah. suits oh, yeah. also uh, like uh, more than half That's of them gotta die. be similar yeah like uh, why are people doing this at some point it was uh we needed certain people to do crazy shit just to get us to advance you yeah. know these are the guys that like oh we need food yeah but right. all the food is in the cave over there with the fucking you know bears uh, who's gonna go in the cave oh, no, the outliers i'll do the it thin red line yeah mm-hmm. that rise of superman gets into all that that's a i mean that's i think it's just a different thing we live in a different time now mm-hmm. I mean, we don't like you said we don't have to go into some cave to get food and shit like that so it's so we have to find these other things to push us to well those think limits. of this this is kind of crazy uh and my my grandfather told me this years ago um and, and my grandfather's an immigrant right he came here um, you know, with, with my mom when she was four and he came here, had no skills or whatever, didn't speak the language and obviously was the first person in our family to come to this country. And, you know, he's a huge like pro America. My grandfather's always like America's greatest country in the world. And, you know, you guys are lucky to be here and this, that, and the other. And he says that one of the fascinating things about America was that because it, it's a new country, if you look at all the, all the nations in the world, America's pretty damn young, but he says it was built by people by a it was mostly built by people who took big risks to come here. So it's like a self-selection bias. Like we are the products uh. of, and, and I mean, it's changing now because more and more now it's not the case, right? So, but for a long time, the people that made up this country were people who- Willing to make the leap. Took huge risks coming from other countries. People who traveled out west and, you know, there was no, there were no roads or whatever to figure out what's going on. And they're yeah. the ones that settled and did all- and so it was. A, he said, "Look, this it was founded by all these crazy risk takers." And he said, "That's why you have all these entrepreneurs and businesses." He's like, "They're all from the same kind of you know uh, it's that that history." DNA strain, yeah. yeah, which I think is interesting. Justin, did you did you fix? I know you you brought up on the show. I don't know if it was a few weeks ago or what, when it was, but you brought up that you had done the Everly Well test and did the vitamin D, and you were low. Yeah, no, like, I just tested again. Oh, you did? I did, and I was I was hoping that some of my progress was going to make quite a bit of a dent and to be honest it didn't really move the needle very much oh, at all oh, didn't yeah. move it at all not i mean just a couple of points like it wasn't enough to be substantial so. so this is what i found also this is what blew except for mine was the omega yeah. so i was i was so under on that and what i thought was crazy was i was actually supplementing now i wasn't supplementing high doses i wasn't consistent every single day but i was taking in my omega-3 like i used to say i used to like what i would do is okay if i didn't have fish two or three times in the week i would take my omega supplements but it's looking like i gotta take it every day yeah so for me too i was thinking about it in like vitamin d and like like i my skin and everything else too like i need sun like i i I feel like i'm already like i'm just always deprived of uh you know exposure and i'm not doing myself any uh benefits by always being indoors and being under this like fluorescent lighting Mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff and but you how know, much vitamin D were you taking? I'm trying to remember. I don't know the exact. It, I was only the, taking. What, the, I originally suggested was taking amount five thousand IU's, yeah. and after we talked to uh, Doctor Lyon, she's the one who's got me to boost up to ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you when you if you go to the doctor and they test you with low vitamin D, uh, many times they'll give you even more, like fifteen, twenty thousand. Really, I'm wow. not recommending that uh, to anybody, but see, well, I could definitely do that. See, here's the this is dose. here's the value of being able to test yourself. This is why I think Everly Well is tapping into a market that is well. They are exploding and why I think it'll continue to explode is because there's such an individual variance with stuff like this. Like, how would you know if you weren't able to test yourself regularly? And then for the average population, for the average person, there's always that barrier where, okay, I got to go to the doctor. I got to tell them my symptoms. I got to get a prescription to go to the lab to do the test. And so people just don't do it. 
where you can order this at home. You got it at home. The way I recommend people do it is if you, you buy, have you get two, so you yeah. have yeah, one now and then one in 30, 60 days. And and, and then test it. and then de- test different protocols because yes. what may work for one person may not work for another person. Like your vitamin D barely went up and you were taking I don't know how much vitamin D you were yeah, taking. Yeah, it was just the recommended amount, so it was probably similar to what Adam mentioned. But yeah, if I could go up, you know, more in dose with that, that's what I'm going to play with next. And then also it's just stuck in my head to where I'm like going to be outside a bit more and so naturally I mean, we're in winter and like it's been, you know, like less exposure, but so still. Try this. Try um, eating a high cholesterol meal and then going out in the sun. Okay. Uh, because it's the cholesterol is used in the synthesis of vitamin D uh, from the sun. Okay. So I would, I would surmise that that might, you know, help out the process. My vitamin D was uh, was wasn't bad at all. It was pretty good, but I always supplement with it, and I've always taken cod liver oil, which is well, you do that. Fish oil you supplement for yeah, it. You're really good about doing your walks with your shirt off all the time and doing shit like that. Like those are those all that stuff matters, man. And I I really think why mine is so bad was because I think I I my body adapted to the amount that I got for half of my life. There's literally like I'm right down the middle right now because I'm coming up on coming up on 40 years old. It was about 20 when I really stopped spending almost all of my day outside. I was mm-hmm. always outside. I was always on the lake. I was always by, I mean, shirt off and tan. And like, I just don't, I don't my, and I can see it by my complexion. Like I don't, my color that I have is nowhere near what it used to be in my early twenties and, and teens. And I think I got used to taking in so much from the sun. And then all of a sudden I go to, like Justin said, like the, the last 15, 20 years of my career now, or my life has been, in these buildings with fluorescent lights and I'm not out in the sun at all like I used to so be. So what in in some of the uh you know like having a deficiency like energy is one of those that gets affected quite a bit from that, right? From energy vitamin well vitamin D acts like a hormone in the body and when it's low depression, anxiety, um you could feel foggy brain fog, uh, it could affect hormone levels, so testosterone can be low uh-huh. from low vitamin D, low fertility, Skin issues. I mean, it's it's an extremely important. All all the vitamins are important, uh, but vitamin D in modern times is you know there's people have been written books on it how it's kind of a chronic deficiency and it's it's because we don't we're indoors all the time and because we don't consume foods that are naturally high in, in vitamin cholesterol. D, oh, yeah. which would be like organ meats and mm-hmm. you know like like cod. Think about this, cod liver oil. This is a fish oil from the liver of cod. So it's not just fish oil. They actually yeah. take the liver out. That's where they're getting the oil. And so in these in these Arctic countries, in these countries that are uh, you know where they don't get much sun, if you look at the traditional diets of these people, their their diets are very high in vitamin D uh-huh. because they've evolved to you know to to get their vitamin D that way. And people who live in the warm areas typically don't have diets that are high in vitamin D, but they're outside. But now nobody's outside anymore. Yeah, and so you're getting all these issues. Your your uh, how does your psoriasis respond to? Well, it's an, supplementing with vitamin D. When I'm on it, I can. Know, it's just like the Juve Light thing too. It's like when I'm consistently doing these things, I notice a difference. When I fall off of it, you know, and I think that's the thing that's important to to note with people is like. You're not going to take a, a vitamin D supplement for four or five days and all of a sudden increase your bench press by 500 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's not like that. It's like it's it's getting your body to to work more efficiently, and it's something that you're uh, you're obviously not getting an, enough of what your body needs. And so for me, like with my autoimmune, like that's something that when I'm giving it that attention and I'm supplementing it, it doesn't eliminate my psoriasis, but it suppresses it, which makes Mm -hmm. a big difference. Then I'm not itching it. It's not getting all scabbed over. Sure, it still has kind of this kind of pink look where I can still tell that it's there, but it's a big difference when when I'm on it. That And and I've definitely connected uh, gluten to flaring that up, Mm. which which sucks because I know that like, that's something that I like to like intermittently come in there, but I've now done this enough times where I've been like dialed nutritionally, and then I allow I allow that in the diet. And you for, get it, and then it, and then it, it's like I now, and I used to think like, oh, is that just you know, am I, is it in my head that I'm thinking this way? I'm like, no, I've I've now tested this enough times where I've been perfect, and then we'll go have like a, a burger, two burgers from Five Guys or whatever, and it's like hours later i'm i'm picking and you've compared it to like a, a no bun burger yeah, versus a burger yeah 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 well i mean you know he, this really highlights something interesting in that you could let's say you 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 think you have low vitamin d and you supplement with vitamin d like you're supposed to not retesting and not knowing that it really isn't enough you may just think oh 
I guess my you know anxiety or fatigue wasn't you know a result of low vitamin D because I've been taking it now and I don't feel better. Not knowing that it's not enough for you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you've been supplementing, and you're like, I don't notice a difference. Well, it actually hasn't raised your vitamin D levels. Right. So that's why I love you know testing yourself. Yeah. You got to be able to test yourself throughout the year. Like the ones that I like to do are the I like to do the testosterone ones just so I know my workouts, my sleep, what makes my testosterone levels more optimal, what brings it down. But individualization is the future. It's uh, this, which actually I was reading an article earlier on a the, a diet now, a new diet that they think is going to be kind of the future uh, of diet. They're calling it the AI diet, what artificial intelligence diet. And we talked about computer the, chips. Yeah, no, what I, I I don't even know what this is, but I hope it's like this because I think it would be brilliant. And it's kind of what I do manually right now, which is you assess like your foods that you've eaten over the week, and then based off of the types of foods you're eating, you're gonna know. It's just like the way I pick my it's omega three. Reorganize it. Well, so no, it'll tell most- you like you've had foods that are uh, low on vitamin C. You've had you haven't had enough uh, omega. You have, and then it tells you like these are the things that you should be supplementing for based off of what you've consumed. Is it like that? It's similar because if you consider that now we talk about intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is doing what this AI diet is trying to do, and intuitive eating is really learning your body learning what works for you, learning how to read your signals and, and, and be connected to your, you know, hunger and fatigue and, you know, your skin and your hair and all that stuff. And it takes a long time and it's an ongoing process. What the AI diet or what this article was talking about is how artificial intelligence will be able to do this for you by measuring all these d- and testing all these points of data. Mm-hmm. So like everything from your person's health, lifestyle, family history, medical conditions, your immune system, anatomy, physiology, your environment, but then also in real time testing blood gu- glucose levels and hormone wow. levels. And so now when you eat a food, it's going to compile all these billions of, of, of bits of information that would be impossible for you know a coach to do for you that you may be, able to, may, may be able to do for yourself intuitively or learning, but that could also take a long time. Instead, this will just tell you, hey, by the way, when you eat, you know, if you want something sweet, here's your better options. Don't eat bananas. This is what bananas do to you. So choose uh, figs and apples instead. Or, um, you know, what's going to be better for you today based on your current physiology because you didn't get good sleep last night. Your macronutrient breakdown should be this. Here's your food options. Here's your better options for protein because these proteins – Amino acids affect you in this way. Mm-hmm. This is what affects your digestion. Like it's going to be all so individualized, and all and only AI would be able to do this. Dude, I would love for well, you to pretty cool. reach out to somebody who's behind it to to talk to them. This would be a great interview. Well, because well, that's very very interesting to me. Uh, and, and here's the thing: like, there's always going to be. It's like even the Everywell test. I tell people to use it like a like a DEXA scan. It's it's not like you can't get hung up on the exactly oh this was it, it said this and it was off by two percent or I retested this I got my blood work done and it's off it's like no use this as like a a, a compass for you to kind of point you in the right direction it's not it, you don't need to hang on every, where it's like oh this was off by two and then you're gonna get people that are gonna shit on this mm. AI diet because of course there's gonna be exceptions to the rule and there's you you can't uh, you, there's things that you just you got to take into consideration like stress like yeah. something can alter alter everything inside of you immediately that you did not control that that would potentially throw off what this ai thing is doing well, but there'll always be human error too right. until they actually implant it right you, right yeah. so you know you, well, well, we look, use things like this as guides yeah and stress stress will spike your blood sugar you get if right. you get stressed out right now um you tell your body totally tells your results. liver to dump you know yeah. sugar into your blood to give you more energy but so check this out in the same article they did. Uh, they they had a bunch of people, eight hundred people without diabetes, and they had to meet. They had to meet over five thousand standardized meals, and they did four, and then forty seven thousand meals that consisted of their usual food intake. So they did five thousand standardized meals that were provided by the researchers, and then forty seven thousand meals that they just did on their own. So that's a lot of meals, right? Yeah. And they there were over one point five million glucose measurements that were made. You know what they found out of this? This what? is the trippy thing. What? So uh, what they found was the biggest determinant in the blood glucose was not the food itself. It was the gut bacteria. Wow. That was the biggest determinant in, in terms of how a person's blood glucose response was for, for a food. So it wasn't, it wasn't so much cookies yeah. are going to cause this in you. 
it was your gut microbiome. Uh, you know, uh, microbiome is going to determine how your blood blu- uh, glucose responds. Healthy gut, healthy you. Wow. How crazy is that? But there you go, Doctor Rusio. Yeah. But yeah, when, when it get, and, and we're so far off from the technology. But yeah. if, but at some point, it'll be like that where you'll have an implant in you that's measuring hormones, measuring maybe something you swallow that stays in your gut that's going to measure. Your microbiome, uh-huh. you know, your blood glucose, your whatever, and literally in real time, you'll eat, and it'll say to you, "You should probably stop eating this and that." Or here, why don't you get this food and look up what's an ideal meal meal for me right now on your app? It'll say an ideal for me right now. Do you think they'll ever this. grow like uh, beneficial bacteria that they'll end up sending to people as like a probiotic? You know, that will like, well, this particular strain of bacteria will get you lean and you know have all these like beneficial traits to it, and you want to like repopulate. Your I gut think with it. they're going to go and try. I think it's way more complex. I than know, right? Exactly. But but if we could, of course, yeah. could you imagine that if you just take a pill and it would replace your current microbiome with this new one that's beneficial for all these different things. Yeah. Absolutely. Do I, are they going to make mistakes along the way? Sure. I think they'll be like, here, take this pill. Oh, awesome. I feel so much better now. And it'll oh. react differently to different people. Yeah. Yep. Oh, now you're a zombie. Yeah. Well, we're cool. Fucked. But anyway, <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's the future is this individualization of diet of, you know, exercise. I can even foresee AI helping people with workouts. Imagine mm-hmm. if, in real time while you're working out the ai will be able to tell yeah. you uh do one more set right or oh, the that's... right dose of stress like oh. it'll just tell you like your your parameters how rad would that be that'd be awesome i would totally imagine if your ai machine which was super accurate was telling you no you need to do five more sets of squats and you're tired you have like back. one power bar for longevity and then one for performance yeah. and they kind of like fluctuate yeah at some point you know it might it might even be like that but then then i also think if we're that advanced we probably won't need to work out. The AI will just, <laughs> yeah, it'll yeah. just create the right cascade of events in your body for it to. We'll just be floating for on for it to work. You know. It'll be interesting. I think it'll be good for the the person who's who's getting into it because I think part of what has made Mind Pump successful is us discussing like to or speaking to the the general population. We were just talking about this yesterday with Taylor that you know a lot of people in our space are really speaking to themselves or like this elite group when you think about the like this real hardcore serious workout people but one of the things that we knew when we came to this space was to try and really address the average person that doesn't really love to work out you know what I'm saying they they don't have this passion mm-hmm. to train in the gym 5 7 days but they want to be they're 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 aware that they're not in a a healthy place and they want to be healthier they want to do it the right way and so i think that addressing those people i think this a tool like this is going to be incredible for someone like that that's like hey well it's 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 going to give them all the information that they need that will be truly beneficial to them the only thing it won't be able to do is make them change behaviors mm. um that and and let's be honest now okay all of us sitting in this room right now who have trained we've all trained a lot of fucking people is it really the information that's that's if is it lack of information do you guys think that's preventing people no. or do you think it's the fucking behavior changes i don't yeah. i don't but i do think that the first step in in changing behaviors is awareness right so I, I I think that there is a, a big chunk of people too though they're just just not aware at all have no idea and if you something like you you brought a, a good example like if you just knew that uh you're the instead of having the banana having an apple and a fig uh, would affect you this much or this much better than it would be if you had a banana I think if people were just aware of that they probably would slow down I hope, the banana I, right? I would hope so but how many people know that a slice of pizza is worse for them than a salad or something like that and yet they still choose. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the part that's going to be well, really tough. That's why it's not. It won't be game changer. It's not going to come in and change the world, and we're not going to eliminate obesity. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, there's there's still people that are doing things to their body. They know damn well that it's not ideal for them, and they don't. I think don't it'll give be game shit. changer for the for people who do the short. Like, I'm going to get shredded real quick, or I'm going to. Like you'll still see the yo-yo stuff. It'll just be more effective. Oh, I think it's going to be. I I think the person is like the one who's who is aware of that shit and they want to make the change and they're they want to make the right steps because what what we've seen in all the years we've been training is what's really common is the there's someone who gets to a point whether it be a tragic thing that happened in their life or they got results back from their doctor and they're like oh fuck i need to make this change and they've they've made the decision in their mind like no more of the pizza no more doing the shit the, and then the mistake they make 
is they go from one extreme to yeah, the they other. Go all in. They go all High in. Intensity, everything. Yeah, and that's just that's really really tough to to maintain that. Um, and I was just uh, going back and forth in a in a DM with uh, this lady, and it was I got to read this now that we're bringing this up because I just feel like this is these are my favorite on on these these type because I know there's a lot of people that listen to this and they just in one year out the other. Just wanted to let you know that I'm a F45, you know that the yeah. class and hit junkie converted over to maps anabolic i'm just moving into phase three and i'm loving my results i fought for years doing hit to get these results i've gotten in a legit handful of weeks it was a big adjustment for me to let go of the hit mentality that unless i'm dying and sweating i'm not getting results i love it i'm a marketing writer by day so if you're looking for a guest blogger to write or anything like that let me know i would love to this program has been amazing thanks for the great program you guys are great that's awesome Sweet. right but yeah. I feel I feel like the, I think that's a, the more common person is somebody who's aware that they they need to make better choices and they've been marketed to a certain way and so that's the, the idea that we are I mean the the marketing that we see in our space that's so common is the eat less exercise more the motivation hype the no days off the beast mode the the leg memes that are going out there there's these high intensity group training classes that are all hyped up with loud music and energy it's like that's just not for ninety no. percent of the population. Yeah. It no, really isn't. It's it's yeah. It's weird. The, the challenge is always going to be how you get people to even with the right information to add here. Yeah, yeah, not just adhere, but you know, fundamentally make. You know, I have a cousin, and um, I brought him up a long time ago. He's actually visiting right now from Italy, staying with my parents. This kid lost two hundred pounds. Okay, on his own. He didn't do any gastric bypass. He didn't do anything crazy. And it was literally an epiphany that he had. It, he went from eating tremendous, tremendous amounts of food. I mean, when you lose, when you have 200 pounds to lose, you're, this is a big, big dude. Because now, what is he? He's won like 180 pounds now. So he was, he was a big dude. He just had an epiphany. And the epiphany was he wanted to come visit uh, America. And, oh, you know what it was? His mom was taking him to go get uh, gastric bypass surgery. And on the as he went up there, they were talking about how, all the different complications and stuff. And he saw the stress it was placing on his parents. And he just said, that's it. I'm going to do this on my own. And he literally decided that moment. Then he decided he wanted to come to America, lost a bunch of it, came, visited us, went back to Italy, lost the rest of it, now came back. 200 pounds on his own, and it was all with the with the – the, the most rarest way you see people do it. Just like he that. just, that was it. Wow. He just changed his mind. And I talked to him about it and he talks about it like it's no big deal. Yeah. And I told him, I'm like, do you realize how rare that is? Like nobody ever does it that way. Like what was it? And he goes, I just decided. I mean, just crazy, yeah. right? It's just absolutely insane. We, we do have that kind of power. We do. We just forget. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Island Inversion. What is the best way to break through a training plateau? This is the the, the big question uh, that a lot of people in fitness will have because at some point, whatever you're doing, I don't care how great it is or how effective mm, it is. You're going to hit a wall. At some point, it will simply stop working for you. Your body's just going to stop responding. And I can't think of anything in fitness that's more frustrating. Like it's so frustrating to be the kind of person that's very consistent, mm. works out hard. You know, you, you haven't missed a workout, plans everything out. Strength Super is going dialed. up. Yeah, everything's going up. Everything's doing great. And then all of a sudden it slows down and then all of a sudden it stops. And you're like, okay, what do I do now? Mm. Um, now, of course, there's a this answer is different from person to person. So I'm going to answer in a very general way. Um, and what I find for most people... Uh, the problem is that they've just been doing the same thing mm. for too long. The focus and, on the adaptation is the same. That's, that's what I normally tell somebody who's trying to break through a training plateau is to change your goal. So if you hit a plateau, let's say if you're a strength athlete and your, your goal is strength, 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 
And and it's inevitable if you've been following some program or some protocol for a certain amount of time, eventually you hit a plateau. And the answer isn't, oh, put more bar on the weight or or add days to the week because you've already hit the ceiling on all those things. The, The answer is switch your focus. Instead of being so strength focused right now, let's switch it to something else. Work on your mobility and let make that be your main focus and really improve upon that. And since it hasn't been a focus, you're going to see positive change and working on your mobility, probably get better connectivity, better joint support. And then when you come back to your strength protocol, you should it'll help progress you through where you plateaued before. Right. And many times changing your focus can be in something that is like almost a completely different sphere if you will it's ideally that well well so let's say that you're training for strength like adam was saying um which is a performance type of adaptation focus um maybe i okay now my strength isn't going up now i'm going to change and try to get uh try to just get leaner now my goal is to get leaner not necessarily get stronger so it's not a performance type goal and then vice versa if your goal is always and here's a bigger one if your goal is always to get leaner and you're hitting a training plateau Maybe you should stop trying to get leaner mm-hmm. and try and get stronger for yeah. a little while. I would say that that's probably the most common, you know, in terms of like everybody that I like most clients I've I've received are usually trying to get leaner, lose body fat. And, uh, you know, that's that's usually like the main focus that they're coming in with. And to get them to think differently and to approach, uh, you know, something more performance based, uh, a lot of times like it just that little bit of a different uh, intent going into the to the workout, they start to see results almost immediately. Yeah. And it's it's also important to understand that you're not going to progress at some point. It has to stop anyway. Right. So. There is no such thing as perpetual progress forever. It just doesn't work that way. At some point, you you have to change change your uh, your relationship to exercise. So you know I can't always be super hyper performance and aesthetic focused. Sometimes the focus of my workout is simply to the goal is to feel better mm. during that workout or to alleviate stress during that workout. I think. One of the other problems with this is constantly attaching measurable progress to workouts. And that's okay sometimes, but not all the time because you can't progress forever. Otherwise, we'd all be bench pressing 5,000 pounds. Well, I, all- I, think you can, I think you can progress forever, just not in the, the, the same measurable things that we're always attached to, which is mm. weight on the scale, body fat percentage, strength numbers going up, like... Yeah, those are, but you can always be, I mean, part of your uh, progress could be, you know, improving concentration and focus on what you're doing, or like I said before, improved mobility or improved, I mean, I believe you can progress for the rest of your life. I do. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think that you can focus just on one thing and progress on that? No, then you'll reach your genetic potential at one point and, and adapt to that. But I think there's so many ways to reframe your goal or reframe your what you're trying to do in the gym that if you are hitting a hard plateau you've probably just been focused on whatever that adaptation is for too long and the best thing and Justin I think hit it right on the head with the probably the most common is my clients coming in uh, trying to lose body fat percentage or reduce fat and they've been driving at that goal for a really long time and they are my favorite Mm-hmm. They're my favorite to put on a bulk. Nothing like taking a girl who is already 20 pounds overweight and then saying, hey, you know what we need to do? We're going to bulk for the next three weeks yeah. and freak her the fuck out. But guess what? What ends up happening, if you can get them to make that mental switch, focus on adding calories and focus driving like strength and saying, "Let's, we're going to add calories in your diet. We're going to get stronger over the next two or three weeks. Then we'll come back to this weight loss goal. And when you, if you can get them to make that mental switch, it blows them away when they go back yeah. to their goal. Well, even if you have very specific goals, like even if I am an athlete and I want to be the best at this particular, these these set of movements, like I need to master these, there still needs to be an interruption in that where you have to take a break from, uh, you know, always having this repetitive stress that's like in, in a similar path. So if I were to now... Uh, take a break, do a different phase of a different uh, focus. So maybe it's even hypertrophy or, uh, you know, have a different goal. Like you said, leaning out, something like that. Uh, For me to then like refocus, like do something different and then come back to 
um, you know, that same strength focus and that's those same skills that I want to master, uh, you, you'll find that your body's going to respond again. And so it's like to, to be able to notice that a plateau is inevitably going to occur well, to, 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 to get ahead of that is everything. Well, this, this was the, the idea behind the RGB bundle or the original three maps programs was that you've got the first one that is the, the strength focused and your foundation and, and helping rebuild someone's metabolism and it's the lower volume in comparison to like black. And then you progress yourself to a performance based program, which is totally different than that and we're really addressing mobility and then we move into this third program where it's aesthetics and the way we look and we're focusing on certain body parts and it's a much higher volume program and the idea is that even if your goal isn't to be a bodybuilder it doesn't matter it's to it's what that 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 program serves to keep you from plateauing and that's why I always tell everybody like even if your goal isn't to be a strong man it doesn't mean that map strong won't greatly benefit you i mean look at the feedback we're getting on it right now mm-hmm. people are blown away by what they're seeing they're starting to see prs and lifts and see see their bodies shaping up and changing more than well that's because it's so different mm-hmm. yeah. it's not because there's, there's this magic sauce in program in the program to make you look a certain way or get strong it's just that it's so different than how most people would train yeah. and then you're, it's it's allowing you well, to help it's to looking break at the body with a holistic perspective too like even if it's a uh you know if you're looking at all these different attributes like if you're just solely focused on a few attributes you're not going to be as it's, you're not collectively you're not going to be as great as you would as of a whole if you consider you know filling those other cups up you know occasionally yeah i i I think part of it also is just doing something different is also just more fun i mean Mm -hmm. the point that i was trying to make earlier is there's also a relationship with exercise that you want to develop where you do it for the sake of doing it you enjoy it for the sake of just what it is and the reason why that's important is because being goal focused is an important thing, but being only goal focused, in many times you'll you'll you're you're you'll forget the the enjoyment of the process hmm. of getting to that goal. Like at this point now, I don't work out necessarily to accomplish any progress or goal. I like it, and sometimes it is for goals and progress, but I also just like it. I also just like working out, and so that's. That's the point that I, w- I was trying to make earlier is it, it is important to change up your workouts. It keeps it fun. It keeps your body progressing. Uh, it's important to do it in a structured way so you don't just change every workout but stay on one goal until you've kind of exhausted it for a second and then move to the next one. Again, that's how our, our programs are designed. But also learn to enjoy the workout for the sake of it. Like while you're exercising, it's time to yourself. You're enjoying the process of it. It's fun. Maybe you like listening to music while you're doing it. You're off your phone so you don't have to worry about you know, work or social media or anything like that. Enjoy the process as well because always, always, always just being focused on I need to progress, I need to progress in some specific way, that can make sometimes make the process uh, unenjoyable. And, it, and sometimes it can lead to you know, okay, I'm not progressing. I don't want to work out anymore. Because look, the, the fact that you're just moving is is a great thing. But at the end of the day, yes, the people listening right now, most of you, your body, if you're in a plateau, most of the people listening right now, you will get out of that plateau simply by changing the focus of the type of adaptation you're going to. Changing it from whatever you're doing. If you're powerlifting, try something that's more mobility and athletic minded or bodybuilding minded if you're a bodybuilder try going more strong man minded if you're you know if it's all about mobility just try pure strength you know try the high volume try the lower volume try the mm-hmm. higher intensity the lower intensity um, stick to it long enough to get your body good at it so you can squeeze out the benefits um, but don't stay in it so long that it becomes stale both uh, mentally stale bored um, but also physically stale, where your body just stops responding. And you know, you see, you see people like this at the gym a lot, where they do the same thing over and over every single day, and they're definitely better off than they were if they weren't doing it. But they're so stuck in the same thing that they don't do anything else that they never really get a lot of the the other benefits they can get from exercise. Next question is from Danae Jor. What is your opinion on frequent daily consumption of energy drinks for people that are into training, especially the zero calorie ones with taurine? Ooh. Energy drinks. <laughs> you know, uh, so energy drinks, 
largely the reason why you get energy from them is the caffeine. Yeah. So I know they say have lots of other stuff in them, like the taurine, which is an amino acid that you know is supposed to improve, uh, you know, increase certain neurotransmitter production, all that stuff. Uh, no, it's not really doing anything for you. What you're feeling is the caffeine uh, from the energy drink. Now, caffeine itself uh, is not bad if it's used appropriately. In fact, some studies will show that moderate caffeine usage um, may have some health benefits for the brain. That being said, boy, is there an individual variance with caffeine. It is massive. What may be healthy for one person may cause uh, hypertension, uh, you know, anxiety, sleep issues, which then can spiral into other things, uh, other types of poor health. Um, and so it depends a lot on the person. And caffeine is a classically addictive substance. Classically, you, you develop a, a tolerance, withdrawal when you go off, lots of side effects. Um, and the, and the, 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 the amount that you need to become bad for you isn't really a whole lot if you really look at the, like in comparison to other, other uh, compounds. Like a 300 milligram dose of caffeine would be pretty strong for most people. A 3,000 milligram caffeine dose would kill most people, right? So all at once. So um, it, it is one of those substances we should treat, um, I, I guess, with respect. Personally, if you like energy drinks because you like the caffeine, it, coffee. You've yeah. got antioxidants. It's all natural. Um, and coffee's got health benefits. Energy drinks don't. Dude, right? nitro coffee. Nitro Because then you get rid of that like acid too. And also like it's a lot easier to digest for me especially. And But yeah, that was one of my... Uh, things from switching because I used to drink a lot of energy drinks. I mean, I was, and I know Adam too, like we've talked about this, but it's, it's one of those things that, um, yes, I was driven to work out. I would, it was part of a ritual where I would go grab a, an energy drink and, um, and then I, it would provide me with just enough stimulus where I felt like now I could go power out a, an intense workout or, you know, I was, very much depending like the performance of my workout based off of like how uh, I set myself up for that with an energy drink attached to that. And so I had to go away from that mentality for a while there too, where I would actually go fasted into a workout. I would go uh, without caffeine into a workout and just try to not be so attached to that as being part of the ritual of having a good workout. Mm -hmm. So, And there's a lot of people with uh, who are high stress, don't get good sleep, maybe HPA axis dysfunction. Right. They should stay away from caffeine because caffeine, uh, it's a, it produces a stress response in the body, raises cortisol, it stimulates your sympathetic nervous system. If you're a perfectly healthy, get good sleep, um, have good balance in your life, individual, and you your liver processes caffeine really well, you're okay consuming a decent amount of it. Most people aren't in that category. A lot of people that I talk to, a lot of clients I talk to, man, their sleep is shitty. Mm -hmm. They 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 work a lot. They're high stress, and I, I I get them off caffeine. And the funny thing is, when they get off of it, they hate me for about a month. Then their body starts to acclimate, and they feel right way way better. And it's interesting too, like how the body responds. Like like if you're that type of a person where you you know you you cut it out at first you think like it's going to be super detrimental. You know, I'm not going to have good workouts, like my body's uh you know not going to get the right stimulus it needs when actually you need less stimulus to for your body to fully recover to then rebuild and then actually progress. So, it's interesting. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, and, and although caffeine does increase performance while you're working out, in my opinion, opinion if the context isn't great so if you're the kind of person that's high stress not getting great sleep and you're pushing the limit let's say you're pushing the limit of like too much maybe I'm, I'm on the line of doing enough working out and maybe almost doing too much caffeine may tip the scale over into the too much too much stress prevent you know good recovery type of thing it's funny you were bringing up the energy drinks that we had when we were when we were younger mm-hmm what was a speed stack? Speed stack. Dude, so just to give people context, uh, your typical Red Bull has between 120 to 160 or 180 milligrams of caffeine. Um, Rockstar, I think it's, it's up like to 250, 250. right? Yeah. The speed stacks that we had was 200, uh, 200 to 250 milligrams, because then they had speed stack extreme or yeah, something extreme like that. Extreme had 350. Yeah. <laughs> Three. So ready for this? Yeah. Extreme. 350 milligrams of caffeine. Plus 25. Plus milligrams. 25 milligrams of ephedra alkaloids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ephedra by itself <laughs> is, yeah. And this, so yeah. now. Jet fuel. Yeah. I'm surprised that we're. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, the, we, you guys sure are. messed me up. You guys are doing a good job of addressing the caffeine part. Um, but there's another 
part to this question that I think is important to address, and I, I got asked this question on my uh, Insta story, which is the zero calorie drinks right. and the artificial sweeteners, and you know what did I what do I think about that? And my response to that was, you know, what we what we do know is this. What I do know is that it's not serving my body. There's nothing healthy about it. And so I think there was a misconception for a long time that these are in the health category drinks. Right. So I think that's the first thing that what we do what we do know is it it's not a healthy drink. Right. So we right. need to get It's not free, it is affecting you. Exactly. It's not something positive for my body. So that I'm fucking fully aware of. And so the way I look at it is I know I know that it's not a, a healthy drink. But then I'm also very aware too that there are many other big rocks in my life that I need to address. And so Am I stressing myself out so much that I'll never have one of these energy drinks? No, I've openly talked about that on the show. I've talked about the the way I've used Diet Coke, but I'm also not ignoring the fact that I know that it's not ideal for my body. So I think that's the answer is that you need to be aware that these zero calorie drinks, and that's not all of them. I know I'm lumping all of them in that category, but I'm thinking of like the energy drinks and I don't know any, any energy drinks uh, especially like when we talk about Rockstar, Speed Stacks, Red Bull, the ones you guys are talking about, all of them have the artificial sweeteners mm-hmm, and stuff yeah. inside of them. So you're getting that stuff in there. It's not ideal for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so I try to become aware if I allow these, and they become, to your guys' point with the caffeine, very addictive. I remember when I started drinking uh, Speed Stacks and drinking half of one was probably what I started off with. Like half of one, I was like, I was flying. How many were you having a day at your peak? Four. Yeah, same here. <laughs> I was drinking. Oh I was drinking God. four a day, man. I don't know how I tolerated four. I would, I, it, how did it, our I would eyes kill me. Close. This is how yeah. crazy it got for me. It got so crazy that I actually bought a mini fridge. That's like the good size one. That's a good size three and a half, four feet tall. I, I bought a mini fridge that went into my home office. I used to drive to LA, okay, it's a five hour drive for us with my buddy's pickup truck. And we had a hookup down at this guy's GNC where he would actually, if we bought if we bought cases of them, he would give it to us for like five cents over wholesale. So I was getting these speed stacks, which are normally costing people like I think they're like, they like three bucks each or yeah, like yeah, that? three, four bucks. They were for me, they were like a dollar seventy five because I was buying them by the truckload. So we would drive down there and I would come back up with like 20, 30 cases of the speed stack and we would fill my entire fridge and then we had boxes that were warm. I don't until, know how we're still alive. Oh, it, it's, oh, but bro, either. ephedra is what they take to make into crystal meth. You guys know that, right? Right. That's like one of the building blocks. of. Now it's not crystal meth, but it works in a similar way in the brain. And if you're, you're drinking four a day, that's a hundred you know, milligrams of ephedra alkaloids with a shit ton. I used to do the same yeah. thing. No. Shit ton of caffeine. Yeah, it worked. It Definitely. Uh, it, I wonder how much. <laughs> so that to me, that's that, that's the real takeaway yeah. is I know that I didn't go from overnight going from the guy who drank half to having four in cases in every single day. It started with the occasional one here and there to then one every every day, then to two every day, then three. And then it just leads down. And then I'm pretty sure almost even the Lane Nortons would agree that that's probably not a healthy right. dose of caffeine, ephedra, artificial sweeteners, right? I even think he would say like that's a little crazy. But right. the reality of is it is reality of it is if you're justifying it as a health drink or you're 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 not thinking that it's not ideal for your body, you're you might be okay with that. And then real easily you're having these things all the time. Well the reason people justify it is because they do the either or thing. So it would be like this like, oh hey, why are you smoking a cigarette? That's not good for you. Like it's better than four cigarettes. Like that's a stupid argument. Like, oh I drink this zero calorie energy drink and I'm like, well, why are you drinking it? It's not good for you. Oh, it's better than a sugary one. Well, okay, that's a stupid, a stupid argument. It's 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 not better than nothing. Right. Is the point? And here's the other thing we want to consider also, and we completely negate this. We completely separate this. The the perception of sweet, even mm. though it even though you get no calories, even though it's coming from a chemical instead of sugar, the perception of sweet still changes things in your brain and in your body. Just the simple act of you perceiving sweet. It doesn't happen. You don't just perceive sweet and then because there's no calories attached, it does nothing to you. Something has happened. You are perceiving the taste of sweet. And what it's doing is it's changing how you want food for the rest of the day. It definitely affects your appetite. Um, and it changes how food tastes 
later on from there. It, have it, a bunch of artificially sweetened foods and then go eat real food and see the kills difference. It, it kills it. Yeah. And that's, uh, God, what a great point you, you're making right now because this was something that uh, it, it didn't, it wasn't until I competed. So this is not until I'm 30. Did this, this light bulb fully go off for me when I had to be so strict I was eating nothing but whole foods? But I had ruined like that connection for myself with fruit my whole life. Like even if I had fruit, it was like forcing it down because I need or I needed to, or I blended it in my protein shake. But I could not eat an apple and enjoy an apple. I couldn't eat grapes and enjoy grapes. They weren't sweet to me. And that's because I was a candy fanatic and I was drinking all these drinks like crazy. And I've, I had completely altered like my, how my body right. perceives these foods. Hmm. And it, when I went on, when I went competing and then I came off and I remember the first time or when I was competing and I was dieting, I remember the first time I came off all the sugar and artificial shit is what I meant to say. And I, and I had the first bite into an apple. I mean, I, I had the first, what I thought was the first time I had ever in my life tasted what an apple was supposed to taste like because i've been allowed since i was a kid mm -hmm. candy like crazy fucking ice cream like crazy cereal like crazy right into my high school years of all the energy drinks and sugar shit and i mean i was a candy fanatic so i didn't really take my first real break and even as a trainer i learned to work it into my training and everything like that and playing basketball so i could afford to have it all in there and i wasn't fat so I never, I never thought that, oh, I, I shouldn't have any more of these things because it's not causing me to be obese. I, I've worked it into my mm -hmm. diet. But the major effect on me that I didn't realize until I competed was how much it had changed my connection to real whole foods. And up until that point, dude, I did not like fruit or vegetables at all. Well, look, here's, here's a good analogy, okay? If you, uh, we've all had bad dreams, right? Where you're getting chased by a monster. Your body reacts as if there's actually a monster there. You get the, the chemicals, you get the hormones, because you're perceiving a feeling, okay? When you eat something and it tastes a particular way, even if that taste is not accompanied by calories, things still happen in your body. It is not, it is not like having nothing. So when people say, oh, it's healthy, it's great, it's a great alternative to food because it's low calorie, they're completely negating that. And all the studies show that people who consume lots of these types of drinks tend to not be very healthy. And people will say, well, it's not because of the drinks, it's because of the other food they eat and the other way. Well, obviously, yeah, obviously yeah. it's- All contri that contributes. That's right. So I always tell people, just look, if you want to have one here and there, that's fine. If it becomes a, a part of your daily ritual yeah. um, and you're, you know, look, and everything else is dialed in and, and you're, you want to look at fixing something else, take them out and watch the improvement in your health and watch what yeah. happens. And it, maybe it's something that's related, may not be directly related to the zero calorie drink. But I think, uh, again, you cannot separate that experience from what the you know what comes with the food, which is the calories. Next question is from Mike Strength Coach. What's the best way to approach nutrition with a family member who had a serious health scare, which was likely caused by years of avoidance and poor awareness? Ah, dude, this mm. is such a hard one. And we've been asked at least, I would say, four or five times since we've started this podcast, a question like this. Right. Yeah. And it's been a while since we've addressed it. And I think originally I tried to find the answer for people to help them out. And I, and the first few times we got asked, and I think they'll probably the last time I talked about this, because I think I had something really recent uh, at that time. I had lost uh, Katrina's father, who's now been passed uh, going on three years that he's been gone. And I remember when he got um, diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, being this person who, you know, has a, a background in, in nutrition and I've experienced this with other clients and knowing like how this person should be eating and and then wanting them to and and them not wanting to and like, oh, fuck, what do I do? And you feel like you you want to help them. They're your family. You love them. But the reality of all of this is you you can't. They have they have to want to make the change themselves. They have because even if you tied them down and you force them to eat the way you want them to eat, it would never last anyways until they have made that choice themselves. And I feel like the more that you try and uh, you force it on somebody, the more they naturally will push it back. 100%. And the yeah. only way I have had success or seen long-term success and converting family members into making better health choice in them is to live as the example, as to to be that person so much 
that they look at your life and they go like, man, Adam, you are always full of energy and you always are fucking this and you're always this and that. And then you can attribute that to your, your discipline to taking care of yourself. And, and that's your opportunity to then coach that family member into making healthier, better choices mm -hmm. for them, trying to convince them when they're not ready to receive it. It reminds me of when I in, in leadership and, and, and managing others and trying to develop them. Like if you try and point out all the flaws that uh, that a, like a trainer was doing, like I never would break through. It wasn't until I just tried to be the example and they would come to me with an open mind of wanting to learn, would I be able to change behaviors? So you have to do the same thing with nutrition in your family. Like until they come to you seeking that, you're never going to really change their behaviors. And so if you can't get them to come to you by saying something, then the best route is to to be that example for them in hopes that they do. Yeah, there's there's no better way. I, there's really not much I can add to that. I think, um, you know, what they, what's that quote? Be the change you wish to see in the world. Right. Um, I mean, that's true for anything. It really is. Uh, be the best version of of yourself. Um, and, uh, hopefully they'll recognize it and ask you about it and then you can help them out. I guess, I think the best thing you could do is just be there for them, love them, mm -hmm. care for them. Don't judge them. You know, look at the end of the day, we all do stupid shit that we know we shouldn't. Um, there's has to do with something they, they, you know, their issue is something that you feel like you have a grasp on. So that's why you're thinking it's, it's stupid, but I'm pretty sure you may be doing things that they probably think is idiotic as well. Mm. Um, so just be cool, be accepting, and just be the example. Yeah. Just be the example, and at some point, they might ask you. And if they don't, don't beat yourself up for it. You, there's, it's impossible to force someone. Yeah. Just not going to happen. you got to be careful, too, that you... Because there's an area, too, where I think sometimes uh, you have to really ask yourself what your desired outcome. And if your desired outcome is to help them improve their life and the relationship that you have with them, sometimes fighting them in this area, if you look back and go like, oh, my God, I spent the last year trying to- Ruins them. it. Yeah, it ruins it. It's mm -hmm. like you, you, where you would have been better off, like, fuck it, they're going to eat McDonald's, I'm going to love my uncle or I'm going to love my aunt for who they are and spend time and build, qual again, focusing on the other aspects of their life that you can, that you're a part of versus trying to fight them on what you want them to do. They've got to want to do it it's, first. It's funny because I'll have family members that I'll like- push, 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 push. And then, uh, I know, and then they'll go get help, fitness health help from like some book or someone else. Yep. Like, why the fuck didn't you ask 100%. me? And it's like, Oh, I know why, because I'm the asshole. that's always pushing you. Yeah. Right. That I just experienced that recently. I found out my dad was doing the ketogenic diet uh, under my nose. I had no <laughs> idea he was even like trying it out, you know, and was my mom kind of comes aside and is like, how, how can you help him, you know, like uh, keep this up or like do something similar that he can actually adopt and, and make practice wise. And I was like, you know, like he knows I'm there for him. I give him little bits that I know will stick. And so it's like one little practice that I know like he can easily do. And then he sees success in it. It's just a matter of like, he loses momentum, goes right back to the same habits, but is more conscious every time he goes to the doctor, there's these markers that keep popping up and there's these pills that keep getting thrown in the mix. And, you know, at some point, like he's, he's realizing that like nutrition is a big part of this. And so he's asking more questions. So it's not completely hopeless in, in that they're never going to change. It's a matter of just always know them knowing that you're a resource, but not enforcing that like it really like imposing because that never sticks you know, like, so there's opportunities when they present themselves. I want to be there and I want to be like, you know, Hey, I'm going shopping. You won't come with me. Like my, my dad and I were just going to go to the grocery store. He wanted to know what foods I buy. I'm like, fuck yeah, that's an opportunity. Yeah, it, so it, you never know. This requires a lot of self work. The big, the big work that you have to do on yourself is just to be accepting of what is. So, you know, you got a family member and their blood pressure is high. They just had a heart attack and, you know, but they survived and they're still eating shitty. You just got to accept it. Like, okay, this is their life. And yes, they're probably going to die earlier, um, but uh, I can't control everything. Um, so I just got to love them the way they are and just accept it. And that's fucking hard because when you're with yeah. somebody that you care about or you have a parent that you care about or a friend that you care about and you see them going down this path, 
it's 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 hard not to just you want to strangle them. No, do what I say so right. that you don't have to put me through pain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's their life, so it does it does require a lot of self work. Next question is from Corey Samudowski. Do skin issues like acne automatically indicate food sensitivities or do caffeine, stress, lack of sleep all contribute as well? Boy, I love, I, let me tell you why I like this question so much. It is. It was always so infuriating to me to have clients who would have all these acne issues you go the to their dermatologist, dermatologist yeah. yes, and then they'd come back and they'd be like, well, my determined dermatologist says my acne has nothing to do with with anything that I eat. It has nothing to do with my food. Yeah, that was like my, my, my dermatologist <laughs> said about my psoriasis, and you were the one who dropped the vitamin D thing on me. I was unaware of that fucking four years ago or whatever it was when you first said that because I had asked my dermatologist multiple times, like, you know, is there something I can do to change my diet nutritionally that would help this? Yeah. Nope, nope. No, no. <laughs> we don't have a cream for that. I'm sorry. That's yeah, it. That's yeah. it. It's because the, it's the, the, the training is like, what medications can you give? What are the medical interventions you can do to solve this acne issue and they don't look at lifestyle interventions. Now, maybe it's different now. Maybe it's different now, but it used to frustrate the shit out of me because then I, then these clients, what they would do is they would clean up their diets. We'd remove certain things. We'd find food intolerances and sure enough, like clockwork skin, usually would start to clear up. It would usually start to clear up and it all had to do with, I mean, the guy listed them here, uh, you know, stress, lack of sleep, food sensitivities. Here's the thing, like if you have a chronic health issue, which acne is, I think you could put that in that category, right? It's not an injury. Like you didn't like hurt yourself and get acne. It's on your skin and it's chronic. It won't go away. Um, if you have a chronic issue, then it's has your body's out of balance. It's not, it's very rarely a genetic issue. Very rarely do you just have a genetic issue for a chronic ailment. What's more likely is that you're your body like most people, um, and you're just off balance. And mm -hmm. it may be it might might be some something as innocuous as, you know, something you're putting on your skin that's giving you acne, and it may be something as complex as your emotional state, you know, for mm -hmm. you know, can stress cause chronic health issues? You better fucking believe it. And so I'm not gonna rule out anything with stress including acne. And I know there's some medical professionals right now that are rolling their eyes like, nah, stress can't cause acne. See, no, stress can cause a lot of different fucking weird things. And, but it's just so hard to tackle and it's just so hard to, to, to work with. I mean, you're talking about something that's extremely complex. So in my personal opinion, whenever you have anything that's chronic, there's just something that's out of balance and you got to figure that out for yourself. I would start with food because that's the easiest place to start. And maybe do a classic uh, elimination diet where you eliminate all the common food intolerances, you know, gluten, dairy, um, maybe all grains for some people. I know uh, Dr. Ruscio likes to put people on a kind of a, a low FODMAP paleo diet. That's mm. his that's his elimination diet uh, starting point. So you could start with something like that and then gradually reintroduce foods and see if th something uh, you know things pop up. Here's the thing with acne though, acne takes a while to go away and it takes a while to surface. Mm. So it's not like you eat something today. Some people do this. Well, they'll eat something today and break out tomorrow. But many times it takes like a few days to a week for you to notice things. Well, I know. Uh, go ahead. Oh, don't you see like typically acne? Uh, coming about around the teenage years where you're like getting this huge influx of hormones and like this change of hormones is pretty substantial. Is that where like mo typically like the most of the times you see it start to arise or is it like yes, but individual I individual variants? Yes, but I would like to see, I would like to control for other factors. So I wonder how many teenagers would have all that acne if they were eating really well, right. getting good sleep, getting good sunshine, you know, good activity, would we still see, you know, it be as, as bad as it can be? Right. Because some of the medications for acne are, I mean, like, uh, what's that one, that one that you take? Proactin? No. Uh, what's Proactive? That? No, it, not Proactive. That's, yeah, a, that's a, a, a name commercial name. brand. Yeah. Um, uh, God, what's the one, the prescription drug that, the, that you'll get at the, the dermatologist that you'll take orally? And it, one of the side effects of it is like, it could completely wreck your, you could, you, your, your, your wreck your gut like people develop uh gut issues afterwards and all kinds of other emo autoimmune hmm. issues as a result of it is it retin uh what's it called 
Yeah. Look up uh, acne medication, Doug, so I, I know what I'm talking about. The, some of the side effects of that are fucking crazy. Um, uh, That's an interesting theory that you have that you think that there's a possibility that we would see a, uh, potentially a dramatic difference in the teen, these teenagers if they weren't. Because let's be honest, too, a lot of the really bad food choices you're oh making God, is around yeah. that time. I mean, you're taking fire, you're junk food. Fire Acu- Cheetos. Accutane. Accutane is the drug I was talking about. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, Accutane has got some pretty nasty side effects, um, and they'll give it to these people. They'll take it, and it gets rid of their acne, and they're like, oh, but the side effects of it are pretty nasty, and the long-term effects, uh, they've connected it to some, some pretty bad shit. They're with the considered gut. antibiotics? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe Accutane is a is a antibiotic, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, anyway, I, I really do think that there's just a balance issue. And I think, here's the thing, if you have acne, um, acne is a, a really, and I know it's, it could be painful to have acne because it's your image, right? How you look. But it's a very visual, clear representation of there being something out of balance. Yeah. A lot of people don't have something that's quite so visual and it's something a lot worse. So when I used to get clients who come to me like, it's my acne, but like, okay, cool. You know, we're dealing with something that we could see that's not going to kill you. So let's, let's see what we can do to, you know, to make that better. And in my opinion, elimination diet, uh, uh, that typically will, will nip it in the bud. And then if it's not that, then it's getting more sunshine, um, and, and getting better sleep. Usually the combination of those three in my experience, and again, I'm not a dermatologist, I'm just a you know personal trainer, but in my experience, the people that I've worked with have seen pretty big improvements. I know my girlfriend Jessica; she identified. It took her two years to identify what the hell was causing her skin issues, and it was chocolate and peanut butter. Those two foods, right? Which to her, you know, she was super pissed about oh, that because wow, yeah, that's her horrible. two favorite things, yeah. especially together. But it, it was hard for her to identify, and it, we did a whole elimination diet, and there it was. Well, and the question is, is it the chocolate and the peanut butter that's causing the acne, or is it the chocolate and the peanut butter that's potentially upsetting her gut because it's getting yeah. through? And then that's I don't think that, there's something inherently wrong with those foods. Right, I think that's what, but I think it's important to say that on the podcast yeah. so people understand that because I think there's all there's like these ideas that certain foods cause acne, where it's right. more likely that. The, it's what it's going to be individualized for that person. It's whatever you probably have a intolerance to, then is what flares up, and that's a response. It's kind of like my my psoriasis, French right? French fries, yeah. It's I I noticed with my psoriasis that there's just there's certain foods that if I allowed in the diet, it it flares it up. And when I'm eating really clean and all whole foods, I notice I don't I, I, it doesn't it keeps it suppressed, right? Yeah. So if you develop an, an, an intolerance to a food, any food can start to do that. I had a I had a, a client who got eczema from bananas, and it took us fucking forever to identify it. We had to do elimination, 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 and we we got him we got him down to a few foods that he was eating. Eczema started going away. Then we reintroduced his, you know, his banana, and we were all like, "Well, fuck! There you go. It's the bananas that are causing that. It's it's not uh, accepted right now, though, in uh, Western medicine mainstream. So I 100% guarantee right now there's, uh, you know, doctors listening and, um, you know, skin doctors listening who are like, ah, that's all rubbish and that's all bullshit. Uh, five to ten years, you won't be saying that. I guarantee it'll be mainstream I agree. if it isn't already. So. Um, and with that, look, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can download any one of our guides for free. In fact, you can download all of them for free. We have guides that teach you how to squat more weight, build better legs, build your arms, work on your core. We even have a guide for personal trainers to help them become more successful personal trainers. Also, if you want to find us all on social media, we all have our own individual social media handles. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. Justin's at mindpumpjustin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee. 
And you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.